Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. Right now, I'm in the 708 Art District. Once again, you see behind me is the mural of the Hyundai Motor Studio Art Center. And I already made a video of 708. I will leave a link in the description below if you haven't seen it. So this is the part two of the video because uh, in 2024, many things will happen. I heard many landmark places will be closed due to the affordability issues of the uh, studio and gallery spaces. I don't want to miss the opportunity to show you one last time 708 as it is coming towards 2024. So we're like in the last days of 2023. Happy holidays and uh, let's take a tour around. I'll be showing you the places according to uh, the time that I visited, not not because of the importance or alphabetic orders, it's just completely random. So if you want to skip some parts, you can uh, toggle the time steps in the timeline below and go to the parts that you wish to see. Let's work. It snowed just a few days ago. Now the temperature goes from zero degrees during the day to minus 15 at night. Everything is frozen solid. The management company has a team working around the clock on um, de-icing the roads, as you can see in the video. But 78 is huge. It is 25 times bigger than the M50 art district in Shanghai. I went to Shanghai and made a video about it. If you want, check it out. It's a small and cute art district, but 78 is massive. So you can imagine it would take them days to completely clean it up. Our first stop is the 78 International Art Exchange Center. The name sounds official and it is. It is an official um, exhibition center for rent. And there is a solo show going on. Let's have a look. Zhang Hui. So the uh, gallerist uh, assistant told me that uh, this artist uh, grew up in a village in Northern China. So. Her works mainly uh, about um, the life she had when she was young, like those little rabbits. I guess they are her childhood friends and uh, I guess that's herself with uh, this is uh, the grain that uh, you know you make bread from. Addition of 12. Addition of eight. Painted bronze is uh, sold at uh, approximately uh, 5,000 euro. Edition of 66. And this space you see is a government run uh, art space, uh, mainly uh, renting out the space to uh, institutions and uh, companies to show art. I also grew up in rural China around the same time as the artist, but I must say that I do not hold any romantic ideas of a developing country. Plus Cafe. Nice. Hello, Master, from Picasso to Andy Warhol. Da Qian Gallery. This is another one that charges 10 yuan to enter. <laughs> it's so cold. <laughs> There is an ongoing exhibition. Peace out. Wow. Kang Hao Xian. Peace out. Star Gallery was founded in 2005. It's known for representing emerging young artists from China, you know, like fresh blood, like this artist. And the subject matter isn't limited to China. For example, this exhibition is about nightlife in New York. If the paintings haven't made it obvious enough, you know, clearly it is party in the USA. And those works reflected the peculiar aspect of social culture today, 
well, social culture or social issues, depending on how you look at it. Well, it's kind of unusual. See snow this week. We are 15 degrees colder than Moscow. Oi! Oh my god, it's deadly. It's super slippery. I think they totally should put like a some sort of a rug or you know mat. Oh my god, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's all frozen. It's all slippery. This is a space zero and they have a show that is about winter. Okay, a solo exhibition of artist Qin. Let's take a look. The 108 moments. All the works are editions of six and uh, they're all shot on her iPhones. So it's uh, about uh, 50 kind of uh, dollars for each. Would you buy it? This is the artist. She told me that she has a day job, so she's not a full-time artist, but she really enjoys taking photos and building a small portfolio for herself. So she's here to share her passion with family and friends. I asked what was her favorite work, and she said this set of photos because it was this little moments in life, very private, secret moments that touched her heart. This gallery space had exactly a five day gap in their calendar, so the artist was able to book it uh, last minute. And the market price to rent a space like this is approximately 1,500 US dollars per day. Oi, cold. So this is like uh, Instagrammer's uh, favorite uh, spot. Do Tun. What is that? Ah, okay. So it's a little store. Tang Contemporary Art. And now their exhibitions are 30 yuan for both. Spurs Gallery. Oh, this is not Spurs Gallery. We entered the wrong door. No wonder it feels very familiar. This is the uh, second space of artist Li Xiangqin, the founder of the uh, Zero art space. Look at those sculptures. Don't they look very familiar? In the last video, I showed uh, this uh, nude lady wearing textile. That was them. Because they are very close to Spurs Gallery, almost everybody coming in was asking like, hey, is that Spurs? Spurs Gallery, this super famous place. Content warning. It's a solo show of Shanna Waddell, an American artist born in the 80s. Content warning. I think it's a, a cricket. It's not a roach. I think this Spurs Gallery is like the most popular space so far because it's, uh, it's packed and outside is like minus eight degrees and uh, inside it's, uh, it's packed with people. It's uh, surprising to see. Spurs Gallery was founded in 2005. It's one of the leading contemporary art galleries in 78, representing almost 30 artists from China and around the world. It's quite a reference uh, in the art world in China. My mom is like, go and have a look, look, look. What? <laughs> She's like, is it art? What is it? To be honest, I'm quite surprised to see uh, works with uh, very heavy 
subject and nudity and somehow, you know, religious, I mean, kind of. I'm surprised because usually all the works here needs to be pre-approved by the uh, relevant uh, uh, governing bodies, so. Nick Cosmas. What is that? Okay, so this is the uh, display space. Okay, I thought it's locked, but apparently you can uh, make appointment by WeChat and uh, visit. Next stop. Well, look at this. I don't remember there was this thing in the end of this corridor. Let's have a look. Look at this. Look at this Mercedes Benz. That was not here before. So strange. Some sort of food covering, I hope. <laughs> I hope it's eatable because they are like birds eating those things, I guess. <laughs> Look at this. Of course, people won't miss this as a photo opportunity. <sighs> what a beautiful afternoon. Minus nine degrees. This was the uh, old Pace Gallery, if I remember correctly. Very little did I know I was about to be massively disappointed. 7 and 8 Cube, they're showing this uh, solo exhibition of Tsai Guo Qiang. Tsai Guo Qiang with Mercedes Benz. Oh. Mercedes Benz Art and Science Exhibition. If you own a Mercedes-Benz, uh, you'll be treated like a VIPs and you can enter for free. You see that I'm uh, very orange because they, they were behind me. So they basically told me that uh, it's not a solo exhibition of Tsai Guo Qiang. It's a, uh, um, a car exhibition of all the new lines of Mercedes-Benz. That's why there's a large sculpture there and uh, it's more like a uh, advertising show and Tsai Guo Qiang did do a collab with them but towards the end of the show like the very deep inside and you have like a little corner of Tsai Guo Qiang's work which is not really like I mean if it's Tesla I would go but if it's Mercedes-Benz no but wait I still don't get it though so you need to be a Mercedes-Benz owner to get inside but it's advertising promoting Mercedes. So it's like, if you already have Mercedes, why would they want you to see more Mercedes? And if you're not, they'll be charging you like 140 yuan to get inside. That's like 20 bucks to see advertising. I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't mentalize, you know, what's going on. So those people, they're all like looking, picking inside to see some Mercedes. What's so good about it? Many people were like looking. I can't see nothing. <laughs> Not really interesting. And my mom was like, there will be firecrackers. No, <laughs> there will be firecrackers. <gasps> oh, what's happening? It's broken. Fa Shi Jia, what? What is that? Is that an Eiffel Tower? Mechalin Center of Art. Elemental constellations. Actually, there's someone I know from this table. So it's such a coincidence. <laughs> okay, so the exhibition is on the second floor. It smells good, it smells food. Michelin Center of Art has been formally opened in January 2022. It's a not-for-profit art institution under the group Red Star Michelin. It's a high-end furniture brand in China. I knew the brand, but I didn't know they have a space in 78. It aims to build a practice-oriented site focused on contemporary visual inventions and become a new cultural coordinate on the contemporary art map.
according to their website. I'm just reading it out loud. It's、uh, quite a ambitious statement. They might have、uh, slightly underestimated the difficulties to penetrate the contemporary art world. So, well, let's see. They are doing very well in other domains. Let's see how they do it in art. I think they are cooking downstairs. Oh my God! It smells so good. Elementary in the plate. They have an ongoing workshop about food and stuff. Well. <laughs> 喂，是中南海吗 ？In the last video, I showed you this space, and it seems like now they are dismantling. It's so cold. Cold, 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 cold. <sighs> now I'm just walking around with mom, messing around, having a good time. It's written 防火防盗，确保安全。Yellow corner, this、uh, French photo print art gallery. Last time I came here, it was、uh, open, but it was dark because they don't really have like electricity inside. And it seems the sign is still here. They don't have electricity inside. I think it's more than just the electric wire. Reparation. It's not open. You see, you see this. It's not open. The gallerist of、uh, Mai Le Mela Us Mela Gallery told me that、uh, there is an ongoing exhibition that is quite interesting. So I'm here, but it's freezing. It's freezing. I don't know how long my phone can still hold to this weather. Sanctuary. Oh, let's get inside. This is going to be an eccentric exhibition. Okay. My mom was like, painting. Where? Where is the painting? Where? <laughs> It's a good question. You see the name of the artist, the signature here, but painting. I'm night blind. I don't see anything. <laughs> She will have a crisis. <laughs> painting. Where? <laughs> It's not me. There is nothing on the canvas. Everything is covered by white paint, so you can see、um, the paint, but you can't see the painting. If that makes any sense. 再见，拜拜。Now we're going to visit、uh, the gallery next door with a strange name. I was like, Ice Labs or what? Is、uh, Isi Lava? <laughs> that was so funny. Neither. It's very interesting. So the artist has a very unusual identity. His father is a Bulgarian artist、uh, who used to study at the Central Academy of Fine Art,、uh, where he met、uh, his mother and produced,、uh, you know, him and his siblings. So this artist、uh, is a true、um, world citizen. So Phoenix. Uh, Vorbanov Song Xiaosong, that's his Chinese name, is a product of、uh, two cultures, or even more, because uh,、um, he was、uh, educated in、uh, France, in Paris. And、uh, I read that uh, their uh, marriage, his parents' marriage,、uh, was the first being approved by the government after the、uh, founding of People's Republic of China. Here are the introductions. I'm a mix of Bulgarian yogurt made of soya. This is his mom, and this is a work from his dad. Tapestry.
I like the title of this exhibition. Neither is basically saying his art is neither Chinese or Western. It's a blend of the two. The owner of the gallery lived in France, and that explains why it is called Ici La Bas, and it has a strong French influence. Um, I guess they mainly work with artists uh, who studied or lived in France. So if you are one of them, maybe you can get in touch. An uh, art store or decoration store, and uh, look at this. <laughs> and the Christmas song, please, no. At cafe. Now it's another day in 7 and 8. I read on social media, people say 7 and 8 has entered a cold winter. The future is daunting. Well, indeed, it has entered the winter and things are tough in a slowing economy. Everything's kind of stopped and frozen in place. But after the winter, there might be spring coming and there will be summer. So let's see where it goes. Our next stop is Beijing Commune. Uh, it was closed by the time I got there. Maybe I got there too late. I'm not sure. Um, maybe next time. This used to be a nice art space back in the good old days, um, but now it's a cafe. Here I came across a small gallery called Tang Yao. I think it's a brand new place because I really don't remember seeing it before and they seem to focus on representing international artists. I couldn't find more information on the internet so I cannot tell you more, sorry about it. Now we are on the hunt for another art space in the area of the trains, <laughs> trending trains area. And what you see is uh, 751D Park. And it was uh, designed to be the fashion and design plaza of the 708 district. Um, back in the early days of 708, it was not really, you know, a thing to have this trend of design and leisure, you know, photo spot. I don't remember even from which year it suddenly appeared like if it was always here the whole time. And I can imagine it makes a good photo spot in the summer, but just now it's very cold and my camera is shaking from uh, the cold of my hand. Talking about winter, here I found a spot for winter activities, ice skating. By the way, in case if you wonder, um, we are an independent project and we are not paid to promote any of those galleries mentioned in this video or the stores or like any other entities in this video or any of our videos. We are not paid to say things so we can provide neutral content free of influence to your guys. So now we are at Platform China Contemporary Art Institute and there's only one show going on. The other one, um, they're still setting it up. This is the Alchemy of In Qi. I actually have never heard of, uh, I mean, this artist, this Chinese artist, because uh, a professor uh, told me that uh, there is a show going on that is really cool. So I thought to drop by and have a look. Platform China was established in 2005. It used to be somewhere else, but I can't recall exactly. And it moved to this location in uh, 2015. And it's uh, uh, over 700 square meters. Uh, it's a huge space. And uh, they're doing really cool stuff. 
but uh, I have a problem. Like the name is called Art Institute, uh, but it's a private company and uh, they are charging a ticket to enter. So it's a bit like inconsistent. But again, it's quite common for galleries to charge an entry ticket in 7 and 8, like I mentioned in my last video. So why can't they, you know, it's just so typical 7 and 8. Artist Yin Chi was born in the 60s, graduated from Central Academy of Fun Art in the 80s, and then studied in Paris. When I saw the title, I knew the artist must have lived in Paris because Alchemy is so French. You know, we have our version of Alchemy, um, like in the history of China, uh, just as crazy. You know, men's desire to live forever never dies. Our next stop is Galleria Continua, and there is a solo show of an Italian painter, Michelangelo Pistoletto. Pistoletto is an internationally renowned artist. You might have heard of his name. He's uh, 90 years old, and he's uh, famous for his involvement in Arte Povera movement and his paintings on mirrors. This QR code thing is quite fresh for an artist of his age. I did not expect that. You can scan the codes and get a link to the gallery website. I thought the link would be to like a web art, you know, completely new domain for this artist, but well, to a gallery website, why not? Galleria Continua was first founded in Italy in the 90s, and then it opened uh, different branches in several major cities around the world, and uh, they are present in all major art fairs. So uh, they are like really internationally known, just like the artists. So the exhibition space has three levels, the ground floor, the mezzanine, you see this is an installation with a single-sided mirror, and there is one hall there and one hall behind me, and then there is a, another floor, wow, it's huge. Love differences in Chinese, English, and Italian. It's kind of a common thing to have people, you know, come here and use the space as a backdrop for their TikTok videos and stuff. So this work is uh, democratic power and I was just spinning the camera around because I heard like sound of a huge group coming and I didn't want to be in the middle so right well just to give you an idea no touching no pets no eating or drinking in an art gallery it's completely dark outside I don't know if you can see the ceiling windows, pitch black. It's time to head home. Okay, I didn't realize there is a hidden room. Well, perfect selfie spot. I mean, it's written selfie. It's a bit uh, too self-explanatory, <laughs> what can I say? Galleria Continua. After coming out, I found myself in front of the M Woods. Initially, I did not plan to enter because it's late, but then I saw the uh, dog thing, you know, dog adoption thing, and I remember seeing real dogs there the other day. 
and you have the expression called nice dogs. I was like, dog and dog, like, is it a coincidence or is that like uh, intentional? So I was too curious. So, so I went to ask and uh, the uh, nice staff told me, no, it's just a coincidence. And then uh, this super nice lady told me that she could show me around in the exhibition and tell me a little more about the artist Florian Kruver. The artist was born in the 80s in Germany and started as a house painter apprentice. So it's uh, like a painter with thick brushes, we say in, in Spanish, basically, you know, painting people's walls and houses. And later he went to an art school in Dusseldorf and then he got a professional training and uh, he was discovered while living and working in New York. And this exhibition is his first solo show at this international level. And I guess uh, we get to witness uh, the breakthrough of a young rising star artist. Anne Woods was founded in 2014 by an entrepreneur couple, a very young couple. Immediately after its opening, it became an internet sensation. <laughs> the couple knew very well how to use social media as a tool to promote their brand. And they've always had chosen this kind of uh, art that captures the public attention. Like uh, trending, iconic, and bold. Um, you might like it or dislike it, but you know, it's striking, I must say. And they've got the formula, right? It's the Chinese formula of a privately owned, popular, and prominent contemporary art museum. The works shown upstairs, um, mainly created during uh, the COVID period, so they are darker, you see people wear masks, and they are bad reading. <laughs> one of the works you see here had been collected by the museum. So this one is the one you see on the uh, flyer and this one is their collection. The artist came here for the inauguration and painted this uh, weird Chinese letter on the wall. It says friend basically. Now we are approaching the end of the exhibition of Florian Kruger. Now let's go and have a look at the uh, store. Three R&B fish. So this is their a little market of art merchandising. As you can see, there are little shopping carts. This one is a cart for like three RMB, and the other one, I guess, is 33. So you can see the prices. They're like really incredibly cheap, just a few cents. Like, uh, you know, from uh, regular merchandise of uh, art supplies and stickers, posters to um, home decorations, which is like pillows, really typical, and nice fluffy textile products and uh, what else they have bags or ceramics oh bags okay let me see the price 199 kind of nice but it's still on the expensive end that's not one of those uh, three or 33 yuan let me ask why they are sold still at a uh, quite a high-end price <laughs> I just want to ask the staff, those ones that you see on this rank, Merry Christmas, and on the other rank here, those are the uh, works from this season. Huh, very fluffy. So those ones are actually um, not at a discount. And the other ones you see on the other side, yes, they are sold at 3 yuan, 33 yuan, which is like from a few cents to a few dollars super affordable and uh, they had like two different uh, um, I would say collections right the new collection and the outlets if I may interpret it that way so that is their concept to be able to sell like some things at incredible prices without affecting other products they make okay so those ones are the uh, merchandise of uh, Florian Kruver as you can see, uh, same as uh, the work, this polar bear and polka dots. Oh, it's really heavy. Oh, 
this is eccentric. Ooh, what is that? And the uh, art print, I guess this is a catalog. Oh, cute. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So this one everything is sold at three rmb which is really a, a few cents i don't really know what they are it seems like just some posters and a little notebook but very thin one and here there are some uh, like bigger products i think they are sold at 33 i didn't ask them yet so you have a notebook a uh, mug and a fisby looking i guess stationery says so easy and some tote bags with m Woods logo on them and uh, and plenty of things actually what do you think would you get them for three and 33 ah, i just realized i thought it was just some kind of a red uh, fabric but no it's like a it's like synthetic hair and you can get this as well <gasps> crazy lee art gallery actually i've passed by it several times but never had the chance to come in i have no idea what is it about let's have a look Okay, sunflowers and some uh, Beijing opera. I have the impression that this gallery uh, might be a rental space. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it uh, works on paper, but no, it's uh, on canvas. Well, it's a bit goofy, but it's pretty cool. But it's getting late. I must hurry to the next. Our next stop is a small art store. Sleep, cat sleep. In 7 and 8, nowadays, there are a lot of uh, cute uh, art stores like this, selling art prints and merchandise. Oh, it's super cute. Look at this. Art prints for like 880 yuan, that is like 100 euros. And some teapots, teacups. Super weird, cute ish. Oops. A new day in 78. Time Zone 8. It used to be a really nice cafe and bookstore back in the days, well, like <laughs> a decade ago. And I just went inside and they told me that uh, there isn't a bookstore anymore. It's just a cafe with um, some uh, simple food. And it's open for now, but I'm not sure what's going to happen next year. Let's see. Yeah, here used to be the bookstore and here's the cafe. But uh, I heard for like years and years, even before the pandemic, the bookstore was closed. Mr. Man Cigar, <laughs> come on. Gallery Coffee. A uh, designer clothing store, a vintage store, more stores. This little street is uh, full of little stores. Mm -hmm. 
I heard、um, there is a plan to make seven and eight a leisure and shopping district for like luxury brands, if it is not already one. <laughs> it reminds me of what my friend Martin Weimer said in our last video: the rule of contemporary art in China is not clear. Maybe it is not important because we don't have the same history like in the West. Well, at least in the eyes of the city planners. Art is not that important. It's taking a back seat. Art must give ways to business and entertainment and like development. Here comes our last but not the least stop: independent art space. Here is an interesting space. It's called independent art space. And I see there is this introduction of a 14-year-old girl who has been painting for like 10 years. So she has been painting since four, and it's her art exhibition. It's kind of curious. Let's have a peek. Hello. <laughs> so he's the teacher, and、uh, this is、um, May's early works as an infant, and here,、uh, without any professional、uh, training. And here, as well, and some more anime kind of style. And here,、uh, this is when she started learning、uh, with the professor guy for the last two years. All right, so a fourteen-year-old Chinese girl's paintings, drawings. I was told the、uh, founder of the space、uh, is also an art teacher. Of this girl, <laughs> and usually he shows other types of art, but this is more like a special occasion for his student. Beijing art Opera. It's kind of cute, <laughs> comic. So the gentleman behind me is the founder of the independent space, Mr. Feng Renggui, and he told me that he had been here in this exact space for over a decade. And every once in a while, the rent would rise, but he still feels that is a great platform for him to get to know the art lovers from all over the world. So although he's struggling a little bit, he's still holding onto the space、um, until he couldn't afford it.、Uh, let's see what's going to happen next year. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> 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 Bye -bye. Now we have visited、uh, over twenty places together in seven and eight. Hope you're enjoying this video so far. I know this video is a bit long. I'm glad you have stayed until the end. If you like this video, don't forget to give a like. And if you would like to watch more videos like this, you can hit the subscription button and turn on the little bell. And before finishing this video, I would love to give a big shout out to our lovely patrons. Thank you very much for your support. And if you would like to become a supporter of our channel, you can check out our Patreon page. We host monthly community talks, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and more. Link in the description below. All right. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.